if you've seen the first video of the old Dodge when it got crushed by the tree, well, you recognize this aggravating saw right here. Let's figure out why this thing won't run. Well, let me show y'all what I have found, and then I'm gonna give you a theory of what I think was going on. Uh, earlier this week, I got to look, finally had time to look at it. And, uh, well, I had to look at it because a big old tree fell on my nephew's camper, about three foot diameter tree, and I had to have a saw to cut it up. So I got to looking at this, and what I found was the hose uh, fuel line, where it goes through right here, had literally melted away. So the only time that saw would run is, is when it was full or when I would lean it back. When I leaned it forward, it wouldn't run. That explains what it was doing when I was on the hood of the truck. Now, the reason for it smoking like it was, the only thing I can think of is, you know, I adjusted on these right here and uh, I had them wide open there at one time and I guess it would run good enough like that, and then every once in a while they'd start picking up a bunch of fuel and basically running rich, and man, it smoked like a freight train. Well, y'all saw it. I've never seen a two-stroke smoke that bad, and I've fooled with a lot of two-strokes. Now, some of y'all mentioned, you know, the tank leaking into the crankcase or the bar oil leaking in, and I thought the bar oil was going to be the culprit, but the only way it can get in the crankcase is if there was a crack in the bottom here, I guess it would be the back side, because the crankcase splits right here. And it'd be the same thing with the fuel tank. It would have to be cracked in the bottom to leak into the crankcase. And if they were cracked, well then the fuel would all leak out, the oil would all leak out, and it wasn't doing that. Uh, anyway, I fixed it temporarily with this hose that I got, but if you can see, that hose there is sticking straight out. Well, the reason that matters is when I was trying to cut that big tree up that fell on my nephew's camper, it run perfect for about five minutes and then all of a sudden it just quit and it never would start again that hose sticking straight out it wasn't getting any fuel anymore it needs to be down on the bottom of the tank and that's where these hoses come in i bought uh, two of these off of ebay and they just come in and this is what's supposed to be on it you know it's pretty flimsy it's going to sit down on the bottom once you put your filter on it you know those filters are weighted so what we're going to do is i'm going to take my makeshift stuff off of here the hose and to do that, I gotta take the carburetor off. Well, while I got the carburetor off, I'm gonna go through it, make sure that there's no trash in it because you know, it melting that hose like it did. It may have put little pieces of rubber in that carburetor. So we'll clean it, make sure it's good. And it will put the thing back together. And it ought to run, it ought to cut like a brand new one then. But before I get started, let me, <laughs> let me say this. Uh, on last week's video, the one of the Dodge getting crushed by the tree uh, with the one that this saw was in. Well, there's there's a certain feller. I'm not going to call him a name, but if y'all go read the comments, you can figure out who I'm talking about. I'm calling him the king of know-it-all. He is an expert extraordinaire. And he basically called me stupid and an idiot. And Well, I get a kick out of know-it-alls. I really do. But I know y'all don't want to read that stuff. So, fellers, just calm it down. Because don't nobody want to hear that. Anyway, he uh, was just adamant that I had my fuel mixed too rich. Fellers, I, I've been, you know, I'm not young, I'm not dumb. I've been around the block a time or two. <laughs> I think I know how to mix two-stroke oil. Uh, matter of fact, that oil that was in here, I poured it in the Lombard. She run fine till I pulled that wire out of the ignition. Anyway, let me let me work on this and see what we can get done. I had to stuff a bunch of RTNV right here in this hole, keep it from leaking, and it worked pretty good. But we don't need it no more, so I need to I need to get all that stuff off of there before we proceed any further. All right, let's get the uh, carburetor roster off, and we'll go through it and see if it's got any trash in it. All right, now that I got the carburetor roster off. Let me go through it real quick and uh, 
Let's just see if there's any trash in it. Alright, I don't see any trash on this side. We'll put that back on. And I'll take the other side off and we'll look at it. Everything over here looks pretty good too. I don't see not one bit of trash. Let's see if I can pull that back without tearing it. Oh yeah. I think it's gonna be alright. Just a little bitty piece right there that I see. Uh, other than that, I think it's pretty good. Alright, let me get it back together. And we'll get that fuel line on. And uh, we'll take it out there and see if we'll cut. Alright, let's get uh, this fuel line back in. Uh, this is not going to be fun, I don't think. Where did my little filter go? Here it is. I found it a little bit. Uh, you got to get it through here, firstly. And that's not only really fun, because of the way that's made. They got it where it comes through that way. That's stupid. Anyway, let me see if I can get that in. And I'll be back in a minute. All right, I got through the hole. Now I gotta get my hose up here. Get my felt tar on. Like it, just like it right there. Oh yeah, she's hanging on the bottom, just like she's supposed to. Now I got to get this fella on the carburetor roster. Just like that right there. And then we will put the carver roster back on. Like that right there. Oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I forgot to put my linkage on. This one goes right here. And this one has come loose from down in there. Well, I will be. How about you get in the hole like you're supposed to? This beats all I've ever seen right here. Well, I don't know. I tell you what, it's going to make me mad right here. <laughs> I give up. You know, some of y'all keep commenting that I'm a really patient guy. Oh, trust me, I'm not. I just don't show the temper tantrums <laughs> like this right here. It just popped out again. I think that's it. Maybe it's right. I don't know. Aggravating son of a gun. Well, that's got all that changed out. So the only thing left to do is uh, put this stuff back on. Fill her up with gas and Earl. And let's see for the run. Alright, she's full of fuel. And I've got both screws set to one turn out. Let's see what happens.
fine. Try it again. Ain't got a clue. Ain't got a clue what's wrong with her. Woo! I ain't never seen another one do like this. I swear. Y'all watch this. Flooded big time, and I don't know why. That spot right there, that's where the exhaust was sitting. That's where all fuel, where's it coming from? He ain't got a clue, because the spark plug is dry as bone. He ain't got a clue. It is about 98 degrees out. I've had my fill of this saw for today. I'm going to mark where the fuel level is. And uh, we're going to let this little fella rest. I'm going to leave spark plug out. Crankcase is full of fuel for some reason. That's exactly what the uh, polling was doing. I don't know. It's something I'm doing apparently because it's a saw number two that's doing it. Let's let her rest overnight and let me rest overnight. Well, fellas, it's been maybe two hours since I brought this saw in here and set it on this table. And I want you to look at all the gas down in there. I want you to look at all the gas around the bottom. Watch when I lift this thing up. See the gas pouring out the exhaust? Somebody explain that to me. It is siphoning gas out of this tank through this carburetor and down into the crankcase. This is exactly, exactly what that polling did, and that's why it's in the graveyard. I've got to figure out what I'm doing wrong on these little carburetors. I can't figure it out. I've got the uh, fuel line loose from the carburetor. What I'm gonna do is clean up all this fuel, and we'll leave it sitting here overnight. If this shows up again and I lose uh, fuel in this tank, well then I got a crack in the tank. If not, then it's coming right through here. Well, it's been two days since I left this sitting here. Never had all the gas under it. Well, as you can see, no gas. So, fuel tank is not leaking. Let me take the cap off, show you. Uh, there's still fuel down in there. See it shimmering? It's coming from this right here. It's being siphoned out of that tank. It just like that polling. Uh, I was editing the video for this, and it hit me. I believe I know uh, what happened. I took a trip down Dumas Lane is what happened. So let me take this carburetor back off and I'll show y'all probably what I did wrong. I got the carburetor off, here it is. And as I suspected, I took a trip down Dumas Lane. When I took this apart uh, a couple of nights ago, uh, let me show you what I did. This, well you see, see that little piece right there where the end of my thumb is? That hooks under this arm right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. A little arm. That arm works the needle valve. See it moving up and down? But it's got a hook under it. If you put it on top of it, some of them do sit on top. This one don't. If you set this one on top of that arm, well, it holds that needle valve open. One, it's gonna run rich if it runs at all. Two, it's gonna let it siphon uh, fuel from the tank through the carburetor into the crankcase. And that's, that's what was going on. So, uh, well, here's something else too. This diaphragm, this, I don't know if I told you or not, this is the metering side. This diaphragm works off of crankcase pulses and it's sitting there, you know, moving up and down, up and down while it's running. It's opening and closing that needle valve and letting fuel through. This other side is the pump. If you remember, I took it apart first. It had a small little circle area. That's the pump diaphragm and it had two flappers, those are like check valves. Uh, anyway, it doesn't have a bowl. I remember here a while back, I believe there was a guy that was confused on how these little two-stroke carburetors worked. They don't have a bowl at all, as you can see. This is your pump side, this is your metering side. The reason for this, you can turn this saw sideways, upside down or whatever, and it'll still run. You don't have to worry about uh, a bowl full of fuel. Anyway, 
this diaphragm, and it's only maybe three years old, it feels kind of stiff. So I think if I've got a kit, we'll just go ahead and put a new uh, rebuild kit in it. And I believe that's gonna take care of this. Now that we've got the fuel line issue sorted, I believe she's gonna run like a brand new one. Well, I got the carburetor rebuilt. And also something else I noticed, the uh, right here, that diaphragm that was the meter inside, it that arm, that lever that works the needle valve, it has to be set. I checked this one, I looked up online what it, where it was supposed to be. I checked this one and it was a little bit high, which means it was probably running a little rich due to that. So I set that best I could. I got it put back on. So I got gas in it, so let's go outside and see if a sucker will run. Well, it's thundering and carrying on. It just got done raining here. So hopefully we'll get struck by lightning. Let's see if this thing will run though. Maybe we've got it. I don't know. I'm going to put some more fuel in it. I'm going to sharpen that chain because it looks pretty rough. And then I guess we'll head out back and try to cut some wet wood. Well, my file is pretty much shot. So probably going to cut real good. And it's probably going to cut to the right because the left side of that chain, it, it looks pretty bad. But anyway, let's, uh, let's give it a try. <laughs> percent but it's much much better than it was but you can see that chain is getting dull that right there cutting to the right it's i don't know what's wrong with it um i've got the high jet just barely open and it tells me you know something going on with the carburetor uh but it is a lot better at least <laughs> at least i'm not filling the place with smoke now so we're we're making progress it, it don't it don't cut like it used to it used to you couldn't hardly bog it down and now it's pretty easy to. But anyway, let's, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set that to the side for a minute. Let's go get that Lombard 
and uh, take it apart, see if we can fix the ignition on it. I ain't done with the little McCullough just yet, but I need to take a break from it. And let's take this cover off so we can get to the coil on this Lombard. See if we can fix it. All right, let's get this little fella apart and see what we see. Ooh. Well, one with two screws holding it on. That's good. All right, let's see. Upon further inspection, I believe I see what happened. Uh, it's got a prong right there on the coil, and that's what goes out to the ignition module plus the kill switch. Well, it was, you know, a double wire, and the one going to the ignition module got pulled off. So I'll just rewire it to the ignition module, and it should run. Well, I got it wired back up, and she's getting spark. I would go outside and cut some, but as you can see, it's already got dark. So I'm just going to start it up in here real quick and make sure to run. And then tomorrow, I'm going to go get a file, a new file, sharpen all these chains. And we may work on that McCulloch just a little bit more to see, you know, it ain't quite right. I'm telling you, maybe we can figure it out. Let me go put some fuel in it. I got to put some fuels in it. Is it on? All right, let's see if this hunk of junk will start. Got the choke on, got the ignition on. Here we go. there well we got the Lombard running again I got this one back on the table I'm telling you this used to be a house of a saw I'm gonna do a little thin king a little pondering tonight and see if I can come up with something that uh, might help this thing run a little bit better well I've done a little bit of pondering not a whole lot and the only thing I know to do is take this carburetor back apart and well let me tell you why in the kit here well in the carburetor See that little disc looking circle? It's a welch plug. They have them in here to block off passages. Well, a couple of years ago, I had a Craftsman leaf blower that would only run on choke. It ran very well on choke, too. Uh, but you know, it ain't supposed to run on choke. So I, I took that carburetor apart probably 10 times. And I finally uh, uh, got to tracing out the low passages and the high passages. Come find out it had a welch plug in it where it wasn't supposed to be i took it out it's been running like a brand new one ever since well the welch plugs they can start leaking and i normally don't fool with them but since we're having such trouble with this carburetor i'm gonna take that carburetor back apart and change the welch plugs i'm gonna you know check all the passages again make sure there ain't no dirt put it back together and let's see what it does well i took it completely apart including taking the welch plugs out there's absolutely nothing anywhere no dirt nothing so i don't know put it back together let's take it outside and see what it does all right i'm getting rained on we just got done coming a big old flood we got about three quarters of inch rain so it's really nice to hear but the humidity is probably at a eight thousand nine hundred and twenty two somewhere in there so it's you know it feels good let's see if this thing will start
little boggy off idle, and I don't know why. If you're wondering what this tape is for, well, that cap keeps coming off. And uh, if it keeps coming off, I'm gonna throw it in the woods and put a corn cob in that hole. Anyway, it's about the best I can get it. Uh, let's go out there and cut some wood, see what it does. Ooh I got me some fresh tape from a gas cap. <laughs> let's see if this thing will cut any better than it did yesterday. I made a couple of attempts and that chain is just so dull. So I quit. I went and got me a good file and it took me probably 30 minutes to get that chain straightened out. So let's see what it does now. Well, apparently, it's not going to run. sucker in the dirt I don't think I heard it but <laughs> I'm bad about doing that well I believe old McCullough is much much better it's still it's still just a little something there but it's much better and that chain is very sharp now uh, I sharpened the chain on this Lombard let's just see what it'll do cuts pretty dang good now. That McCullough used to cut like that. I don't know what's wrong with it. Y'all have to excuse the noise because I'm standing right in front of a fan. <laughs> I'm about to burn up. 
It is so hot here. It just got done raining, so the humidity is just through the roof, about 18,000%. It's pretty humid and hot. Anyway, uh, McCullough, it's still got issues. But at least we figured out why, you know, it was smoking like freight train. I mean, it was smoking pretty bad. Uh, we did figure that out and got it to running again and not flooding. Part of that was me walking down Dumas Lane. And to Mr. King Know-It-All, the gas that's in McCullough and the lumbar, guess what? That's the exact same gas that was before. So do you still think I don't know how to mix my whole? I think I do. I got several more old saws. I'm over on saws. There's old McCulloch. I don't know what it is. That thing is huge. I just guy gave it to me. I brought it in here, set it down. Uh, there's a home light. I, I don't remember what number it is. It's got carb issues. I think it may be the car boot. They're bad about doing that. There's old Remington over there running fine. Then one day it decided it didn't want to run good. It's probably carb issues. There's my little bitty Poland right there. That's usually a pretty good running little saw. Good brush saw. Of course, there's the old McCulloch. There's another Lombard. It runs. It's the only one out of these that's automatic oiler. No, take it back. The home light's automatic oiler too. But it, the automatic oiler stuff broke on it, and I've got to fix that. That's what's wrong with it. Plus, it don't have a bar. I need to get a bar for it too. But we'll do a chainsaw will it run video. A chainsaw palooza, if you will. One of these days, maybe this fall, see if we how many of them we can get running. I wish we could have got the McCullough running, you know, 100%, but I've got other stuff i got to do. I, I can't spend a bunch of time on it. But, you know, we'll, we'll get it eventually. You'll probably see it in another video. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace.